and welcome to my tutorial. This is Research with Dr. Colin and today I want to explain the concept of common method bias in Likert type dataset. I encourage you to sit relax and enjoy the tutorial and I hope you learn something new today. Let us start by talking about what common method bias is. And I've summarized them into four points, which I'm going to read out for you. Common method bias, also known as common method variance, is a potential threat to the validity of research findings that arise from using the same method to collect data for multiple variables in a study. Two, it occurs when the variance in the data can be attributed to the measurement method rather than the construct the measures are intended to present. Three, common method bias is a concern because it can lead to sparse relationships between variables impacting the internal validity of a study. Researchers need to be aware of this potential bias and take steps to mitigate its effects. And lastly, common method bias may affect the validity of study findings. If a significant amount of variance is attributed to the method of measurement rather than the actual constructs of interest, it may lead to inaccurate conclusions and interpretations. So these points are important. We need to consider them when going into studies that, that may likely require the use of self-report measures. How common method bias can manifest? I have summarized them into these four points. Number one, single method bias. This occurs when all variables in a study are measured using the same method, example self-report surveys, leading to an inflated correlation among them due to shared method variance. Two, item format bias. If all items in a survey have a similar format, example like art scales, respondents may tend to respond to items consistently leading to a common method bias. Third, respondents may tend to agree with statements regardless of their context leading to high correlations between variables. Lastly, respondents may provide answers that they perceive as socially desirable rather than reflecting their true opinions or behaviors leading to biased results. So here are common strategies to address common method bias. And I've also summarized them into these three points. Number one, using different measurement methods. That is, incorporating multiple methods of data collection, such as self-report surveys, observational measures, or longitudinal approach. This can help to reduce common method bias. Number two, temporal separation collecting data at different time points example the use of time lag it can help to reduce or minimize the impact of common method bias especially if respondents do not remember their previous responses third statistical techniques here you may want to apply or employ some statistical techniques like factual analysis which uh, we might know as the Hamann single factor test to check whether there's a presence of common method bias in your study. Lastly, addressing common method bias is crucial for ensuring the accuracy and reliability of research findings, especially in fields where self report measures are commonly used. 
Now, let us look at the statistical aspects, which I'm going to demonstrate to you using the SPSS. So, the Hamas single factor test in SPSS, you can conduct this by doing an exploratory factor analysis where you can load all the measurement items in the study. Haman explained that if the total variance extracted by one factor exceeds 50%, then common method bias is present in your study. So when it is less, then you do not have evidence of common method bias. So let us look at Haman's single factor test in SPSS. This test suggests that you do an exploratory factor analysis where you have to load all the measurement items in your study and then subject them to one factor. I will demonstrate this in SPSS shortly. Haman also discussed the use of factor analysis to explore the structure of responses in survey data. He proposed that if common method bias is present, a single general factor will emerge when conducting a factor analysis of the items. This factor is often referred to as Haman's single factor. However, it is important to note that while Haman's approach has been widely cited, it has also been criticized for its simplicity and potential limitations. Subsequent research has suggested that the presence of a single factor in a factor analysis does not necessarily imply the presence of common method bias and other factors can lead to similar results. So for this, um, some researchers have recommended the use of um, other higher statistical approach like the structural equation model to um, to be sure that you do not have common method bias concerns in your study. So at this point, you may want to pause the video and then copy out the, the references here to support your research. So let us head to SPSS to, to find out how you can also use the factor analysis to confirm whether you have the presence of um, common method bias in your study. This is the SPSS um, with the data that I've already coded. Um, you can see here PSUP meaning support, parental support. I have um, four item statements measuring parental support. I have four item statements from here to here measuring peer support. I have from here to here measuring career decision and I have from here to here measuring significant other self-efficacy and so on. So to check whether there is a presence of a common method bias, I will select, I will go to analyze and select dimension reduction and select factor analysis. So I'm going to select all the item statements um, that I have here and then put them into the variables box. Then I do not need um, the descriptives, so I will leave it, but I will go to extraction. When I head to extraction, I will select principal axis factoring, okay? And then I will fix it at one. So this is basically all I need to do here. Um, I do not need to um, check on any of the rotations, whether very mass, pro mass, I, I do not need that. And I do not need to sort the, the, the uh, sort them by size or suppress small coefficients. I do not need to do that. And I was, so normally, the only thing you need to select is principal as this factory and then constrain this by value of one. And, and then click OK. So this is the result that we, we want to see uh, here, which is the total variance explained. And this is the percentage of variance explained as the total percentage of variance explained. So you can see that the, uh, this is 27.481, uh, which means that um, if you look at the, if you look at the, the point raised by um, 
So if you look at Hamas um, report, you will see that it said if the total variance extracted by one factor exceeds 50%, then common method bias is present in your study. So, uh, but in this case, when it is when it is lower or below 50%, then you do not have evidence of common method bias. So that is the case here. So you can see that we do not have um, issues or concern about common method bias. But the essence of this video is to is to explain to you why you need to put on check the possibility of having a uh, common method bias if you are designing your study so you need to be careful about um, item selections you might want to use different measurement methods where you can use a combination of self-report surveys or, or, and observational measures or any other approach or mixed method approach you can also use a separate timing for example, study at survey people at time one, time two, time three, or you can also um, use any other approach to ensure that you do not have common method bias. Thank you so much.